Hi guys, it's Kath. Today, I'm going to show you how to make dishware and a beautiful modern open shelf for them to sit on. We'll be making bowls, plates, cups, and mugs so you'll have a full dishware set. I'll be using 3D modeling for half of this project, but as usual, I'll also show you how to achieve a very similar result through handcrafting. Let's get started. If you're making these by hand, I recommend using polymer clay. It's an oven-baked clay that you can take your time sculpting. You can also use air-dry clay, but you'll need to work a bit faster with that. For a plate, I first roll a piece of polymer clay out until it's flat. Then I cut out a circle using a ruler and an X-Acto knife. A helpful tip here to make sure your clay doesn't stick to any surface you place it on is to cover that surface with cornstarch. Place the circle over a round surface and push it until the clay takes that shape. Then I cut a smaller circle and place it on the bottom center for the base. You can also cut out the center for a more realistic look. To make a bowl, I follow these exact same steps. The only difference is using a smaller round surface to form the shape. I'll show you how to make the coffee mugs in just a bit. For now, bake these according to the manufacturer's instructions. If you're 3D modeling this, I recommend using Tinkercad as it's super easy and free. For the bowl, I grab this pink half sphere shape, turn it upside down. Make a copy of it and turn that copy invisible. Shrink the invisible copy down just a bit and put it at the center of the original sphere. Raise the height a little and combine the two together so we get a cutout. Take another half sphere and shrink it down. Place this underneath the first bowl. I turn it blue so you can see it a bit better. Make sure the base is at the center and the flatness so it's more of a disc. Combine the two shapes and we have a finished bowl. To make a simple plate, I'm just going to duplicate this bowl and separate the pieces back out. Now I just flatten the pink bowl area. And that's it. Combine the two shapes back together and you have a modern plate. If you want the plate a little bit bigger, just scale it up. For a mug, I just take an orange cylinder. Shrink it down and make a copy. Same as before, turn the copy invisible and shrink it down just a bit. Place it in the center of the orange cylinder and combine the two shapes to cut out the center. Then I go to the shape generators on the right hand side. We're looking for this pipe shape generator. Play around with the pipe until it creates a C-shape that you can use as a handle. Once you like how it looks, combine all the shapes and your mug is finished. Next up is a drinking cup. For that, I take this parabola shape in white. I'm turning it blue so you can see it a bit better. Turn it upside down and stretch it out so it's tall and thin. Then I take an invisible cube and use that to cut away a third from the bottom of that shape. And now I just do the same thing as before and duplicate that shape. Turn it invisible, put it inside the cup, and cut it out. This is probably the easiest one of all. To print these out, I'm using ABS-like resin. It's more flexible and durable than standard resin. It also comes in a lot of colors, but I chose white. Pour it into the printer's vat. Then, turn on your machine, select the model, and hit print. These came out so beautiful and I love that I don't need to paint them. 
I always put the entire bill plate into my alcohol solution to wash the excess resin off. Then I'm able to scrape the cups and bowls off the plate to finish curing. While those cure, let me show you how to make the mugs by hand. Same as before, roll out a flat shape of polymer clay. I cut out a very small circle for the base. For the sides, I cut a rectangular strip. Then just wrap it around the little circle. If you ever have trouble with pieces of clay sticking together, I always use liquid Sculpey as a glue. Roll out a thin cylindrical strip and stick it on as a handle. Now the only thing we need is a place to store these. Let me show you how to build an open shelf with brackets. We'll be using these thin coffee stirrers and these large craft sticks. The coffee stirrers are one fifth of an inch wide and the craft sticks are one inch wide. For the shelf itself, glue two of these craft sticks together to double the thickness. Once the glue has dry, you can cut this down to the length that fits your kitchen. As I've shown in previous videos, just make a cut all the way around the wood and snap off the excess. Then simply sand all the sides so they're flush. You can stop here, but I'd like to add a bit more detail. You'll still be able to see that there are two layers of wood. So if you want a seamless look, add a piece of coffee stirs to all the sides. Just cut it to length and glue it on. Of course, this part is optional and the shelf will look great even without this extra step. I wanted a bit more of a modern look, so I'll be adding some brackets. For that, I'm using more coffee stirs. I cut one piece that's the same length as the depth of your shelf. Then I cut another one that's a quarter inch shorter than the first one, and a third piece that's shorter than the height of the shelf itself. Glue these two pieces together in this bracket shape. Because these will be holding some weight, I like to add a bit more glue to reinforce all the joints. Once that's dry, simply paint the brackets and we're ready for the install. I painted mine black, but gold would also look gorgeous in a light color kitchen. And just like real shelving, first place the brackets on the wall. You can glue them on permanently, or for a more temporary solution, use sticky tack or museum wax. Once the brackets are on the wall, simply place your shelf on the brackets. And then you can start putting on your dishware set. I love the look of these shelves in the kitchen. They're a beautiful way to display your dishware without putting them away in cabinets. I hope you liked this video and learned something new. I'll see you next time. Bye.